I have been a plaintiff's civil litigation lawyer for many, many years, well over 50, uh, here uh, in, in, in Oakland, California. Uh, my uh, practice is uh, split between serious injury work and a lot of employment and civil rights work that I've kind of morphed into in the last 25 years or so of my, my career. So I've been here in Oakland. I formed my firm in 1978, although I'd worked here before with another firm going clear back to the 60s. So I've been trying uh, cases and plaintiff's cases in the Bay Area for a long time. I've tried uh, uh, over 180 jury trials to verdict, which is kind of unheard of nowadays. <laughs> you know what it's like? We used to try a lot of cases in the 60s and the 70s. So that that's kind of where I am in terms of our, our I have a small firm. Uh, there are six of us here. Uh, we've stayed about the same uh, uh, you know, size for a long time. We're, we're selective about what we take. We get involved in a lot of major, interesting, uh, high-profile cases. Uh, most of our cases are referral cases. I was um, honored to be a, uh, a nominee for Trial Lawyer of the Year in both 95 and 96 for a couple of cases that I worked on. And that kind of brought my, me, my attention to what was then called Trial Lawyers for Public Justice. I didn't know a lot about the organization at that time, but shortly thereafter, my old friend Sal Licardo uh, contacted me. And Sal wanted, of course, to raise money for the organization. That that's, uh, goes without saying. But he also uh, encouraged me to uh, get on the board. And uh, I accepted his invitation. And so I joined the board, I think, in 1996. And at that time, uh, a guy named Mike Withy, Michael Withy was president who has become a very dear friend of mine. I'll tell you the story about uh, my meeting up with him just recently. But so I, I so that started my uh, term on the board. And I would say that I've been pretty active in public justice for about the next 20 years, a little less so in the last five years. But I've been uh, uh, involved in a lot of interesting and important um uh, developments and uh, issues and, and problems with, with, with the organization. There was a book that came out called uh, Fighting for Public Justice, and I still have some hard copies of this book. It was published in 2001. It was a guy named Wes Smith that did it, and Wes had written some uh, books with Ralph Nader. He also wrote a book for our Consumer Attorneys of California, our California trial lawyers. So this was a, a, a book of all of the nominees for Trial Lawyer of the Year. And I, I'm in here with a couple of them, but this was very interesting to me. Unfortunately, I don't think they've, they've edited it or updated it, but the, the cases that were coming in were, were just fascinating to me because, you know, I had, I had always considered myself a trial lawyer. I'd always considered myself maybe by then an employment lawyer, maybe even a civil rights lawyer. But then I began to think of myself as a public interest lawyer, which was a different sort of a way to think of myself doing different work because what was going on with, with TLPJ at the time was that I was into different issues than I would typically run into in my practice. I was, I was involved in environmental issues, you know, with Jim Hecker, and we, we were involved in, in, in the issues of access to justice and secrecy and some of this had, had affected my practice but it was really interesting the board meetings were fascinating to me and then it was just a really uh, expansive eye-opening and it really uh, added to my to, to the richness of my career i i would not i would not tag it to a particular case because there were so many interesting cases but when i was involved in some major issues uh, regarding the organization that started relatively soon. One of the first issues we had when I'd been on the board a short time was this whole question of whether we should open a West Coast office. And that became quite controversial and, and became a big issue. And I think we eventually opened the West Coast office in about 1999 and Arthur Bryant moved out here and he came to Oakland. And that was kind of nice because then I had a uh, a public justice trialer for public justice connection because uh, when they opened the West Coast office, it was just across the street from my office. And uh, so I, I had, had that connection. So that was one of the big issues that happened in, in about 99. And 
I think that turned out to be the right thing. That's continued to be a, an important that we that we had a, a connection with both the West Coast and the East Coast. I, I didn't feel I had an expertise in a lot of the cases that we're dealing with in the, in the public interest area, but the area that I worked really hard on and I kind of considered myself uh, more in, in an expertise was membership. And I and I began to, when I got into the organization, Wayne, I was shocked that at that time, there were less than 3,000 members of trialers for public justice. And I looked at the national organization of ATLA at the time, now now AAJ, and, and they had like 60,000 members. And I'm asking myself, why the hell is it that we don't have more members? And and it was a ongoing <laughs> uh, issue that concerns me to this date, but I stayed in it. So I began to become very active in the membership drives and uh, I really got involved in all of what we called our, our Super Thursday telethons. And we had those every year. We had a lot of fun. Uh, the development director at the time was a woman named Catherine Mitchell, and uh, all of us got involved. And those those events became both important to the organization because, one, we raised some money, and, two, we always did get new members. We always kind of struggled keep keeping the members in, but... It was something, and but more importantly, or as importantly to me, Wayne, was the development of relationships. And that's one of the things that uh, I would like to talk about as a theme of my involvement of what, what uh, public justice meant to me was the development of so many important relationships in my life that, that happened through, the, through my years of working with public justice. Well, yeah, Mike, Mike, of course, uh, was was the president, and uh, we were we were working together, and and I didn't know an awful lot about him except that he was from Seattle and he was with a big firm up there and Wall Street Matters firm, and so uh, we've we've been uh, uh, working together a few years, and in, in, uh, and it wasn't until a number of years later that I went back to my. Uh, college uh, reunion year, and I was at Pomona College. Now, Pomona College down south, it's a small college. There were only about a 1,000 kids in the school at the time. And uh, I walked up, and I think it was years later, it was 08, and uh, uh, I walked up, and I saw Mike Withy there. And I said, oh, my God, Mike, old friend. So we, 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 were, we were reminiscing about the fact that he had gone to Pomona College. Now, I'd been about 10 years ahead of him. But it turns out to be even more important than that. We were both a member of uh, the, the kind of wild, hard-drinking fraternity called Kappa Delta. So it turns out that he and I were fraternity brothers that we had no idea about until later. Now, I was president in 03, 04. And as I said, things were going well in, in 2000. And, and, and I was beginning to move through the chairs by then. I had made a decision that I was going to go through the chairs and become president. So I was, I think, in about 2001, I was a couple of, I was like a vice president, but I was following um, in the footsteps. The next guy behind me was a really wonderful lawyer named Larry Trapler. And Larry Trapler was, um, I think he was president-elect. And 2001 was a very difficult year for all of us. We, we, with 9-11, I'd had some losses. I'd lost a partner, my former wife. Uh, my sister died. And it had been a very difficult year for me. And at the end of the year, I, I have a memorial service here. Larry had been very active in, in our telethons and just a prince of a guy. And then and, and, uh, everybody loved Larry Trattler and a lot, of, a lot of laughs and awards about him. And some, he... And, he had just gotten married. They, they, they'd they been living together for a long time, and his wife was pregnant with uh, Barbara with uh, their child. He was 55 years old and in good health. And on Christmas Day, he died of a sudden heart attack, and it was horrible. And I, I hope, I want to be sure to remember Larry, because those of us of that vintage will remember what a great guy he was and what a important contribution. Um, so it was really a very sad situation to see him, such a, a vibrant guy. But it affected my trajectory 
in the organization because all of a sudden I got moved up one more step and became the president-elect to Paul's strip matter. And Paul was president. So we moved on into 202 and Paul became president and I was president-elect. And then, as you probably know, or people well know, we had another really serious tragedy happen to the organization that was really shook us very badly. And that was in August of 02, Arthur Bryant had this very serious automobile accident where some guy headed on and hit them and his wife was in the car and his child. And that caused a, he was very seriously injured. There was some question about this had happened up in Oregon. It was up near Ashland in Southern Oregon. And, and so that um, changed a lot of things for us. Paul, who was president at the time, uh, setting aside all the problems that, that Arthur had, and I worked very close with him with his injuries, Paul had to kind of step up and take on a different role because we had always, um, we had always counted so much on Arthur as executive director. He ran the board meetings. I mean, Arthur did everything. Sometimes I don't want to say you were just a, you know, a, 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 you know, a figurehead. It was, you were more than that, but, but certainly it, operating the, with the presidency without Arthur Bryant was kind of a, you know, you really couldn't imagine that. So, uh, Paul struggled through that and had to work with that. And, and to his credit, he did well.